Some are doing that, some are doing that. Okay, welcome to Mitchell County, City of Camilla, and the Comprehensive Tax. What? Now I'm, I'm off. I can talk loud enough with that. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to uh, the Joe B. Adams Conference Center here in Camilla. We're going to have a tax uh, reform study, comprehensive tax reform study committee meeting here today. Uh, we have a couple individuals here that want to welcome you to Camilla. I'm going to call on Chairman of the Mitchell County Board of Commissioners, Mr. Benjamin Hayes. Ben, please step up to the microphone. Thanks, sir. I would like to welcome the members of the House Comprehensive Tax Study Committee in attendance here today. We have members from the ACCG, GMA, and the Georgia School Board. Association. We'd like to say on behalf of Mitchell County and the sister of Mitchell County that we really welcome you here and glad that you came down to Mitchell County to have your first meeting. I know that most of y'all that live north of Atlanta and west of Atlanta thought that when you got to the airport, y'all was in South Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> but you're really in South Georgia. <laughs> and just remember one thing in the tax study that we all represent the same peoples and they in no two cities and no two counties the same size would affect one county won't necessarily affect the other county but please remember us to give us all the relief and all the help that you can give us from Atlanta because we need some help we represent that part of the government where we say for the rubber meet the road we get to see the citizens every day we meet them at the post office at the grocery stores and they ask them for relief other than tax relief so if there's anything that you can do to help us in this study please help us We'd like to welcome you to Mitchell County. And we had a representative once that every time he passed a bill, he would always ask the governor to send something below the net line. And the governor asked him one day, where's the net line? He said, well, where the money stopped. <laughs> so we want to move the net line down to Florida. So please send some help to Mitchell County. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. I've had some people ask me today what these little things are flying around. And you can tell they've been in Atlanta too long. <laughs> We'd like to have Mayor Jay Powell, City of Camilla, to come up now and say a few words. I want to just echo what Ben said and uh, welcome all of you, not only members of the committee, but members of the audience and the presenters to Camilla. We hope you enjoy your stay here and uh, hope that this represents an effort by all of us to find out what's happening all over the state, not just in particular parts of the state, and that as Ben said, things that affect one part may not necessarily affect others, and we just we appreciate the fact that y'all are interested in us, interested in our particular situations and revenue situations and expenses. And uh, thank you for being here. Hope you enjoy your stay, and welcome to Camilla. Thank you, Jay. We have one other gentleman. We have Harris Morgan standing in the doorway. Harris owns this facility. He has spent quite a made quite of an investment next door in the, in, the, in the free hall in this conference committee and he wanted to add his welcome to you as well. I want to tell you we appreciate y'all being here and I want to tell you just a few things about the McCree Hall. The McCree Hall was built in 1906 and it took us about four years to restore it back to what it is today and it is actually sort of a museum. Uh, my wife, this is a labor of love of my wife, and she put it back basically like it is. The only thing that's not original to the house is the four bedrooms upstairs. They all have king size beds in them. And the rest of it is all original. There are papers that document back to the uh, 1840s where people from Albany were writing down here talking to Mr. McCree saying that they wanted to buy land. And we've got a land grant deed that's on the wall is, that was put there that was uh, given back when the uh, capital of Georgia was in Milledgeville. So, I mean, this thing is really, this is an old place, and it takes, uh, it took, we think, six generations of Mr. McCree's family to spend all of his money. So we had to turn around and redo what, what they did. But anyway, we want to welcome you to Camilla, and if y'all have a break, if they give you a break, y'all take a tour of the house and look at it. It's pretty beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Harris. We've got a large agenda today, and I, I'm going to tell you what our charge is in just a moment, but I think it's, it's time that we ought to introduce the members of the committee. I'm Richard Royal. I represent Mitchell County, City of Camilla, and City of Pelham. I can't ever 
leave that out because there's too much rivalry between the two. Okay, so much for that. Uh, I'm Richard Royal. I've been in the legislature 23 years. Uh, Chairman O'Neill allowed me to Chairman O'Neill allowed me to host this committee down here. It's an important uh, committee. We've uh, got a lot of work to do. Um, let me say one thing. You see all these other mics. Uh, this is being taped to be on the Internet starting tomorrow, Brent. Uh, this will be available on the Internet on the, on the Georgia. Le Legis.ga.gov. You can see this meeting in its entirety over the Internet beginning tomorrow, so all of these tax meetings will be taped and, and available for that for those who cannot attend. Uh, having said that, I'm going to introduce Representative Larry O'Neill. He's chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. And tell him where you're from and uh, anything else you'd like to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Larry O'Neill from uh, Warner Robins, uh, Georgia House of County, actually. Bon Air, and I'm of Larry Terry. Just delighted to be here in Camilla, Georgia, in Mitchell County with uh, my good friend, uh, Richard Patricia Warren, so I'm uh, really looking forward to learning a lot today. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. My name is Chuck Martin. I represent North Fulton, uh, above Atlanta, Alfreda, Walpole, and we call it Greater North Fulton. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll make first two more cities up there, John Creek and, and Milton. Uh, but I've had the uh, fortune of, of serving in the legislature, legislature with these uh, Ladies and my, my colleagues, my ladies and gentlemen, from uh, around the state of for four years. And prior to that, was uh, in local government as city council member and mayor uh, for 10 years. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I know this meeting, you all have to go the best job out there and really do it. Uh, listen to what you have to say and try to make uh, things better. So, thank you for hosting us down here. Thank you all for taking your time to come. Uh, to, to this meeting. Uh, I'm Bush Terry. James Mills. Uh, I've been in the legislature for 14 years. I chair the Banks and Banking Committee, and it's an honor to be here uh, with you today. Uh, my grandparents on both sides are from Grady County, just down the road. So while I'm from North Georgia and represent Lake Lanier area and Hall County, I have roots from uh, down here as well. So it's, it's good to be here today. My name is David Knight. I'm uh, the representative from House District 126. Uh, that's Griffin, Georgia. That's about an hour below Atlanta, and I, I have Spalding County, Lamar County, and Butts County. And uh, it is a pleasure to be back down here. I actually uh, lived uh, in Baker County for about three and a half years while I worked in Albany, so it's good to be back uh, da back down here. Yeah. Richard, I didn't forget my way back. <laughs> Hello, my name is Steve Dillman. I'm from Marietta, Cock County, and I'm delighted to be down here with the middle of the And brothers and citizens, great to get out and see other parts of the state and know where all our bills go or don't go. In two weeks, we're going to have the next session in Marietta, and I'd like to ask each and one of you to come up. We have, it won't be as pretty as this facility, but it's Southern uh, Polytech, uh, right off of I-75, but we'll give you the same uh, hospitality, but everything but the next. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's all of our House members here. Now we have uh, Senator Mitch Seaball, Chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, has brought uh, members of the Senate Committee down <coughs> with us to join us today. And I'll introduce Senator Seaball and let him introduce his panel members. Thank, thank you. Uh, to me, respectfully, Chairman Moore, who had the opportunity to work with him. And my name is Mitch Seaball, and I'm from Sharpsburg, Georgia, um, which probably <coughs> you're a little more familiar with the town called Noon. Uh, or Moreland, um, up in that area. I represent Coweta County, Carroll County, Heard County, and part of Troop County. I, as I said, I chair the Senate Finance Committee. I'm also the majority whip in the Senate. And I'm the chairing the Senate side of this and look forward to being here. And I want to thank you so much for the hospitality. I had a great lunch here um, just a minute ago. So um, I'm sure we'll have plenty of, uh, plenty of uh, good and interesting presentations, so I won't fall asleep after that great lunch. But I'll let my other members of the committee introduce themselves, beginning with Senator Billy. 
I'm Bill Heath. I represent Senate District 31, which runs from uh, I-20 west of Atlanta around I-75 on the north side. And uh, pleasure to be here with you today. I'm Senator Seth Harp. I represent the 29th District. I'm Chairman of Higher Education in the Senate and on Appropriations, Judiciary, and other committees. Uh, I have a confession to make. Uh, I'm down here in Camilla today, and uh, actually I committed a heinous crime down here 37 years ago. I stole my wife from Camilla. <laughs> uh, this is a homecoming. Uh, Joe Adams, Joe Adams, I used to sit right by Mr. Joe when we were in church, First Baptist Church, and I got married there July 26th. <clears throat> 1969, so this is a homecoming. Glad to be down here in Camilla. Good afternoon. My name is Greg Hodgins, and I represent Senate District 7, which includes uh, 10 counties here in South Florida. I'm George Hooks from America, so I have uh, been in legislature 26 years, finishing my 26th year in December. And uh, I represent 16 counties and 37 counties. I have more mayors than any state legislator and more county commissioners than any state legislator in the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to working with y'all. <laughs> many old friends and good people my colleagues today. We're forward to learning a lot. We're glad to have all of you here. We got we have two other individuals I'd like to recognize. Ward Lamb to my immediate left is a House Policy Analyst for, for the House of Representatives, and we have Brian Johnson from Senate Research. They'll be helping us as we go through these meetings and help us assimilate all the papers. Uh, does anyone else have anything before we begin this meeting? I hope not. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Let me tell you a little bit about the background, uh, how this study committee was created. House Resolution 1464 was introduced by Ways and Means Chairman Larry O'Neill this past year in, in January and, and created the study committee. The Comprehensive Tax Reform Study Committee was needed because the populations and economy of the state of Georgia have undergone dynamic growth in the last several years. The reliance on traditional tax revenue sources, when coupled with a rapid increase in demand for services and the demand for tax relief, has yielded a strained revenue structure unable to respond to current and future fiscal needs in a balanced, equitable fashion and has increasingly troubled and burdened financially the individual taxpayers of this state. Over the years, the revenue structure of Georgia, like that of many other states, has received only sporadic piecemeal revision, and these changes too frequently have been made in an isolated context without due regard to the overall tax system. It was determined that a careful and comprehensive study should be undertaken to determine how best to modernize and revitalize the revenue structure so as to create an equitable and flexible tax system for Georgia. And we want to emphasize the equitable side of that. In 20 years of service on the Ways and Means Committee, I know that any time that you amend the revenue code, uh, I don't know if this is the way we should put it, but somebody gets gored. Any tax legislation that we pass usually results in a tax shift from one taxable class of taxpayers to another. So we have to be careful in our analysis of all of our tax code because we don't want to have what our chairman quite often refers to as, as, as uh, unintended consequences in our tax code. Uh, at our first meeting in Atlanta that we had here several weeks ago, we had ACCG, GMA uh, express the concerns of the local county and city governments. We had the, the school board association express concerns for the, the local school boards across Georgia. We had individuals, both corporate and individual taxpayers, express their concerns. This meeting today is going to primarily be a meeting of discovery. We're going to look at the revenue stream or revenue sources, resources of all the city governments, the county governments, the boards of education, and the state of Georgia. Before we can make any type of uh, uh, intelligent decision about what we should do. We've got to identify all the sources of revenue, what the impacts would be if we change those, and to make a, 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 an intelligent decision on what we should do for the tax code. Again, we uh, want to express our ideas that whatever we do, we want it to be equitable. We don't want to have un unintended consequences, and uh, uh, we want to want to make sure the citizens of the state of Georgia are treated fairly. Uh, one note that I might 
tell you on cell phones, I have this terrible thing about cell phones going off in a meeting. If you have one, please put it on vibrate. I'm not going to tell you to cut it off, but put it on vibrate. Uh, having said that, I'm going to turn to the committee over to Ways and Means Chairman, Mr. Larry O'Neill, to make any statements he would like to make. Well, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, and that concludes my prepared statements. <laughs> Because as you can, you can probably see from this view of surroundings and the agenda and Mr. Chairman Royal's opening uh, remarks, uh, he's, uh, he's totally in charge of everything you're going to hear and learn today, uh, has made all the arrangements for this, and has really walked the extra 50 miles, really not just the mile, to, to make this what would probably be one of our most successful, if not our most successful undertakings in this, in this study. And, and, uh, I would just like to remind everybody uh, that, again, as Chairman Royal stated, uh, Equity is is, um, uh, is the byline for, for, for this committee. We're we're not seeking uh, to to uh, to justify any particular agenda that we have going into this. I've asked this committee and our colleagues in the Senate to to come with a con totally clear mind for a comprehensive study of effect and effect of our tax cut. And uh, we're going to try to get around the entire state of Georgia and hear from all the all the stakeholders and. Uh, as the chairman of the committee back in Atlanta, not the one here because that's Chairman Royal, but back in Atlanta, I want to express our appreciation to Chairman Royal for all he's done for this uh, meeting and the organization and everything. Meant much time and effort has gone into it, <clears throat> but really all he's done for the state and the constituents that he represents now for 20 some odd years, and uh, uh, also as the chairman of Ways and Means and other committees as he has uh, served his. Uh, his constituents so loyally in the, in the Georgia House. So we, we appreciate uh, you and your efforts, and uh, we especially appreciate being in your home turf here, Mr. Chairman. So looking forward to the agenda you got set for us and what we're going to hear and learn. Thank you. Senator Slaughter Speedball, would you like to make any comments before we get started? Uh, I'd like to echo Chairman Wilson's comments and appreciation to you. And I'm sure that a lot of people here have good understanding of the wealth of knowledge that we have sitting at this table, especially. Chairman Royal and, and Chairman Brooks, uh, wealth of knowledge to go through this. So we ought to learn, a, many of us should learn a lot from the knowledge y'all have and let's get to work. Uh, for the members of the panel up here, the, the House and Senate members, uh, we would ask that you let Ward or Brian, if we recognize you for questions, help us keep up with those. Uh, uh, we're going to have to move right along and if you have questions or let let one of them know, and, and then I'll call on you for, for your question. Our first presenter is going to be Shay Hester. Uh, she's with the Department of Revenue. I've known Shay for many years. She is a, uh, she started out, as I met her, with the, with the Property Tax Division. And now, Shay, what is your title now? Director of the Local Services Division. Okay. Shay, would you come forward and present to have your presentation, please?
but the audience can follow along here. Uh, I do want to caution the members that I am pretty well versed in property tax, and I know a little bit about sales tax distribution since our division took on that responsibility. But if you have any questions about a lot of this, uh, I must refer those to our Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Emaney, who showed up, thank goodness. Well, he's in the audience. Ed, stand up for a second. Yeah. Let him see what a deputy commissioner looks like. <laughs> <laughs> he's shorter than the real one. Yes, he's a little shorter than, than our commissioner. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Just kidding if you see this, Bart. <laughs> but uh, the, the list itself uh, talks, uh, the, the first item, of course, is us. I can't read that. Selective sales tax, which includes motor fuel, and oh, all the, also that includes mileage tax uh, and all various tobacco, liquor, beer, and wine taxes. I'm not going to go over the amount. I don't know that that's material right now. I think you're just looking for the sources. And then we have the general sales and use taxes, and that does include the motor fuel sales tax. And, and let me do. Uh, let me go back and tell you that the selective sales tax motor fuel does include the IFTA tax as well, and the uh, the international fuel tax agreement. The personal income tax. I don't think that is. Um, I mean, that's pretty well gone dry. Everybody knows. I pay the personal income tax or individual income tax, and there's no sub source for that revenue. Corporate income tax and license tax, that includes under the subsource financial institution occupation tax, network tax, and of course corporate income tax. You'll see the motor vehicle fees, um, that's blank right now. And of course motor vehicles just came back, tags and titles just came back to the department last July. So I don't have any figures on that. I did call our motor vehicle division and uh, they weren't able to give me anything by the time uh, or through, in time to prepare for the meeting. So I don't have that, but I think we can get that for you later to do the, to do the actual stuff. And then we have property tax, which includes general property, which is real and personal property. Um, PSC fees are public service commission fees. You know, we do collect the PSC fees. We have the intangible recording tax, and then, of course, interest and other. There is also a motor, excuse me, a, a motor carrier tax, which is, and you'll see that that is a negative number, and that's because that's the amount of collections that are distributed back from the IFTA, I believe, and if I'm wrong, you help me with this. We collect the IFTA tax from everyone buying fuel in Georgia and then refund other states. Is that right? Oh, so based on the mileage. Based on the travel mileage. So there is a, uh, there is a negative there because there's three funds in that. And then there's detailed citation and temporary permit fees. Then we have lumped all the other taxes. And this one, the one on the website does not, yes, it does, it up separately. We have the coin operator and use machines, the liquor dealer's license, the beer and wine dealer's license, the tobacco dealer's license, and then we have some training funds, the unclaimed property, the state children's trust fund, the local sales 1% collection fee that the state collects for administering the tax and distributing the tax, and then all others, which uh, includes other commissions and collecting and assessing fees. Have any questions concerning anything we've listed or need to know anything further about it? Mr. O'Neill has a question. Yes, sir. Uh, in general, if you could, Ms. Hester, I, I'd really like uh, to know, at least for myself, how each of these taxes that you've listed here are computed. I mean, obviously, sales tax is a percentage of the, 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 the price, uh, especially in the other tax category. I noticed, too, 
I remember we did the indigent defense fund, and those were several fees that, that, that I think our our clerks and courts and everything deal with. Would you not consider that a state tax since it comes it, it, it came out of the the, the state law? Would, would it be interested in your comments on that uh, and how each of these are are computed and how one might affect the other or how the economy might affect the computation of whatever your views on those matters might be. All right, uh, and Ed, you know anything about the internet? I don't. I think a lot of this we may have to get back to it at some time. But is it something that we have available? Would you please get that far? Oh, thank you. What about later on? Uh, if she could just briefly cover how the each each tax is computed. You understand what he's asking? Uh, yeah, Ed, you probably don't have to come up and help me with some of this too. Like I say, I know property tax and I know a little bit about sales tax distributions, but Ed's probably going to have to help us with that. You know, of course, I can tell you about property tax based upon the assessed value of your property or the fair market value of property times 40% times the millage levy by each taxing authority. And, of course, it's based upon the work of the property. It's collected at the local level. It's uh, the, the tax commissioner of each county or the, or the tax collector in the city would collect that tax. They would also they would collect county, school, state, and then they, uh, the county tax commissioner, if contracted with the city, would collect the city's portion. But even though they collect all the taxes, they do remit the state's portion to us on a monthly basis, and we pay them commissions to do so. Members of the committees and members of Senate Finance are really interested in folks. Uh, the motor fuel tax, uh, Mr. Chairman, is uh, a set rate per gallon. It's a seven and a half cents excise tax per gallon and a three percent tax, if you will, like sales tax. A lot of, a lot of folks think, so, think it's a sales tax. It's all devoted to the Department of Transportation. It's all dedicated to fund source. There's also a 1% tax that goes on that motor fuel because it's the general fund. And that's why you see the separation of it. When you get down to the general sales and use tax, which is at the state rate of 4%, also includes this, what they call the, the most extra 1% motor fuel tax. The tobacco tax, uh, for example, is a set price per pack of cigarettes or a set price uh, for cigars and or other tobacco. Liquor is the same way. It's, it's based on wine gallons. With the beer and wine, you know, it's a set rate per those gallons. Uh, the corporate income tax uh, has only one rate that's down in the corporate income license tax area, and the first one income tax has a top rate of six percent. The corporate income tax has a six percent rate. The net worth tax is based on capital here in Georgia, and it's a minimum of ten dollars and a maximum of five thousand dollars. The financial institution tax is not very big because folks get credits for that, I believe. So I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what that rate is, but it's, a, it's like a gross receipts tax. It's a small amount. Uh, the counties also get part of not part of that figure amount, but they also have something to offer up. Uh, Shay has to talk to you about the property tax. The motor carrier tax, which is a negative, again, a lot of trucking companies buy their fuel in Georgia and then travel to other states, and those are our distributions of the motor fuel tax is collected here at the pump and refunded uh, based on mileage to the other states that are in what I call a nationwide compact. Down the other taxes and fees, I, I, we can get you the exact uh, numbers, Mr. Chairman, but point operated new machines is, is, is a set amount per machine, and the liquor dealer and the beer and wine licenses is a set amounts. I just don't have to have those offerings to send those back to the license. The main thing, the property, of course, is the, the property that's issued to the state uh, by the holders of that property in the state. And then the rest is dead. I think that's it on the taxes. Any questions? In terms of, of uh, would you repeat your question about, I think we asked if one would affect the other? 
get it well if it, uh, I was I was interested if you had any particular comments of the interrelationship of the two but let me add to that too one of the goals of this entire committee and, and research forum that we're c conducting it is to is to have a comprehensive <coughs> explanation of every revenue resource in the state dr. Ledbetter is with us somewhere in the audience that does our or how to be a legislator course every two years in uh, in Athens, which is probably as good as there is in any state in this in the country. And we were going to use a lot of the data collected here for newly elected legislators. And they come in where they'll have an idea at the state, the county, and the city, and the school board level what revenue resources they're going to be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis so that they'll be able to be uh, productive for their constituents soon. They take the, uh, or maybe cut down on the time of the learning curve. So we're asking you to sort of act like a college professor instead of a, instead of a deputy commissioner and just give us the, 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 and the, the big college point. professor, what I will do is make available the, the publication that's already printed by the state tax <laughs> which is all those rates. And it's a public uh, guide that's given out every year to anybody that wants the citizens of the state to okay. explain the rates for every one of these taxes and how they're right. So we'll make those available. They're already pre-printed. Ed, would you go into a little more detail on the unclaimed property tax, how that uh, 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 comes to the state, how long it's held, and... and, and Some shade ministries that I'll let Okay. It isn't really a tax as such, but anyone that has funds, let's say they could be a salary check and have been claimed, it could even be any kind of insurance payments, Anything that is owed to an individual or an entity of any kind that has not been claimed, and these companies that are holding unclaimed funds have made uh, made the best due diligence they can find these people who the money belongs to. Within a certain uh, period of time, if they're not found, then the money is sent to the state. Now, it's, it's not a tax. It's not, it's not set on a set rate or anything like that. Whatever the holder is holding and has not been claimed, it could even be tangible property, such as the only tangible property, of course, would be safe deposit box funds. If someone had not paid their safe deposit box fee within a given period of time, the bank would drill the box. They would hold those contents for a period of time, and if the holder or the owner was not found, they would actually send the safe deposit box contents to the state. We hold those forever. The money goes to the state treasury. Uh, it's put into uh, the unpaid property account. It is held there, and it is, can be claimed by the rightful owner or heirs forever. There's no statute on how long it uh, how long has claimed. Senator Seaball has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, do we have any information on, you know, the best I can try to explain this, but if, <coughs> if there's any relationship between sales tax and the personal and then corporate income tax that if let's say that our, we saw our personal income tax go up by 10 percent would is there any way that we could gain any kind of knowledge of what we could expect in any one of the other two areas or if they were to go down do you understand the question i'm asking how does one relate to the other and one how does one affect well, the other as the economy runs if you if, if we could see if, Expected four percent growth in our economy. Would it affect those three areas the same, or do we have any knowledge that would give us that certain one would grow faster than another one? If we saw a downturn in the economy, what would we expect in any one of those categories? I'm not sure we've done anything like that. Senator Seaball, the department does not do the does not have an economist on staff does not do those estimates. Uh, Georgia State. Uh, Specifically, Ken Hagen does those estimates uh, for the governor. I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking of it, uh, No, but I don't know estimate. the answer of how much. I, I think generally if, if income goes up by 10%, I think you, uh, to the extent that there's some disposable income left, this, this, the sales tax revenue should grow, but not necessarily by 10%. Some of that would go into savings and some of that would be spent. Are we aware of anybody that has any knowledge of that? or The department does not. I'm just looking at these two years here that basically our, our sales tax grew by 8.4% from one to the next year. The personal income tax grew only by 56 And in corporate, we grew by 51%. Corporate, I'd like to keep out of the mix. 
Thank you. Cor the, the, the answer to your question, I think, as one grows, the other will grow, but not necessarily by as much. Any other members have a question? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. I had one question on the very bottom of the uh, summary there.